Lord. Mm. Mm. Yes, that's just eating chocolate at the same time, huh? Chocolate bar. Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate, good for you. It's interesting. Let me not go. We're, um, we're on a war footing, as they say. I'm talking about we and me in the world. Whatever. We have a war footing. Chocolate bar is interesting because in World War II, the uh, Allies, you know, Western, well, you know, you know who the Allies are. Uh, the ones that are not Germany and, uh, and Japan and Italy, those are the Allies, the other guys. You know, it's like a, what, what, it was like a, I call World War II like, you know, the two white guys, the white gangs fighting each other. But, you know, the American soldiers would come by, their famous thing was uh, giving out chocolates. You know, and then they did the same thing in like the Korean War and also, I don't think they did it in the Korean War, but I know, I know they did it in the, uh, in the Vietnam War, uh, or as the Vietnamese call it, the American War. But it's a way of, uh, you know, winning the populace to your side, you know. But I had an interesting uh, situation. Fact, let's, let's go to the Korean War. This is really, really instructive. Because if you talk about what's happening now, people get all emotional, whatever happened. That's why I like uh, um, the playwright Arthur Miller, because, you know, when he wanted to deal with the McCarthy era, he didn't deal with the McCarthy era. He went back to the Salem witch trials, you know, and did that play about that. Then, you know, you have to draw the analogies yourself. Anyway, uh, there's a book written. There's a great story about this book, because the book uh, was written by a guy named I.F. Stone. I used to get his weekly newsletter. Uh, I have Stone Weekly was the weekly as well. I really like the guy, you know, and he's just a great journalist, a real journalist, a real, forget the best, he's a real journalist. Anyway, so I wrote this book, I think it's called The Hidden History of the Korean War. And I happened to read it a couple of years ago, but in the four that I read, it was like uh, I have Stone uh, ran into like Che Rivera in Central America, some place, or Mexico, wherever he ran into him at, and uh, I think it was Mexico. And uh, so Che said, <laughs> Che tells uh, I so, hey, you know, that book you wrote, you know, when it, it came out down here and the CIA snatched up all the copies they could. They didn't want that information out there. Very interesting. So I look at, I look at, I look at this because I also read another book by this guy, about this guy, Wild Bill Donovan, about the uh, founding of the, not the CIA, the precursor of the CIA is uh, the uh, OSS. I think it's OSS. One of those things like that. Uh, and uh, and what it was is during World War II, uh, everybody wanted to get into the fight. But these Ivy League kind of cats, not Wild Bill, I don't think he was Ivy League, I'm not sure about him. But these Ivy League cats, you know, they, they couldn't go with the regular uh, grunts of the war, you know what I mean? They, they had, uh, they were basically, uh, uh, since a lot of them traveled, because they had a gap year kind of thing started back then, uh, or just normally rich people would just travel. Uh, so they knew all the different languages to travel in Europe. They knew German, and Italy, and Italian, all that stuff. So they would recruit these folks, these Ivy League kind of people. They all knew each other uh, to do be spies like that. But they didn't have no real mili not military training like the Grunts. You know, they had other kinds of training. So when the war was over, then they started this OSS, this basically this precursor to CIA. And uh, and I think the Dulles boys used to be bankers and used to whatever but back in the point. 20s, 30s, they used to be bankers and stuff like that, or lawyers, whatever they were. So they, two, two, two of those were Allen and whoever his brother, I get them confused and I really don't like them anyway. Um, so they somehow got into the, that kind of thing, got the ear of, of, of uh, who was it, uh, I wanted to say Hoover, uh, Truman, uh, got his ear and, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was fair, excuse me, I, I got sinuses this morning, got his ear it's about communism, 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 whatever happened. Now, back to this book, The Hidden History of, of, uh, of the Korean War, what it plainly, you can plainly see that uh, they, the, general, the Douglas MacArthur was the general back there at the time. Him and his, I think it was one of the Douglas boys, one of those people like that, they basically colluded to spread, uh, to spread the, 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 to ferment the ground, to start this conflict on the Korean, uh, to call it the Korean Peninsula. So basically because of two people who lied, because <laughs> they were asked questions, uh, we had the Korean War, the Korean situation. And we won't go into the, I want to go into the Gulf of Tonkins or what they call false flags these days. But basically if you look at these days, 
It's usually one or two people, well-placed people, do something, and then, and then uh, some other people pick it up, usually the media, you know, and uh, they just repeat what they heard. And so now, because of that, all kinds of people now have to, or get mobilized to die. I mean, I, I guess the most recent example that everybody wants to put up, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, my South Bronx person, Colin Powell, oh gosh, man, from the South Bronx, I'm from the South Bronx, I hate my people from the South Bronx, like Chris Hayes and Colin Powell, you know, flip to the other side, not that we'll call boys, I mean, you know, showing that little white thing like, this is da 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 da. Those kind of people, but when it's picked up without anybody researching, without that McCarthy ever going in and blank out, without looking at the sheep, that, that, that initial is called anchoring, I think it's called. Uh, uh, you, that initial impression you get, you anchor to that. You, you're, 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 you, uh, uh, you're, you're wedded to that first notion without any research. You don't research whatever they say first, and then you end up defending that notion rather than do the research then to do, then, and then deal with whatever the notions come out, you see? So that's the situation we find in uh, right now in 2017, where we have this situation where even, you know how this guy, uh, 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 I, call him, I call him the Donald and his boys, you know, when they, when they came in, when he came in, he first said he was going to do this. Well, we know politicians lie, but this is absurd, you know, and totally flipped. I said within a 24-hour period, five of his things that he said he was going to do, he just flipped them and just went the other way, something about like NATO. And all. It was all a war kind of thing. But here's the thing. Because, and then, well, let me say one more thing. Uh, one of the things I learned, I was, as a military person, being in the military, uh, you find that a lot of times you can get away with stuff by just doing it and say, oh, I didn't know. And then you just get slapped on the wrist and you just keep on going. But when you're the president or the, the head of the military, Donald Trump, now remember the last, uh, the, Donald Trump has never been in the military, Barack Obama was never in the military. You can say George Bush was in the military, you know, if you want, George W. was, if you want to say he was in the military because he did National Guard, or skipped, skipped out of Vietnam War, doing National but let's say he wasn't in the military, right? Bill Clinton, not in the military, right? Before Bill, you had Papa, Papa Bush, uh, he did, did some sort of service, right? Right? Then, of course, you had Carter, who was, I'm sorry, before, before Bush, Bush, then you had Reagan, who was not in the military. That, that being a Hollywood actor and doing war films is not in the military, right? Then you had Carter, who was in the military, right? Then you have, then before, of course, before Carter, well, we can't, Ford was in the military, but I don't consider Ford and, 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 Rock, and Rockefeller, those, that, that presidency and vice presidency legitimate because they weren't, they weren't elected, they weren't voted in, they were just appointed. So then before that, of course, you had Nixon. Nixon, not in the military. All the problems that we have is the people who were never in the military. Because the military didn't run, run roughshod over them. In fact, when you go back, the, the, and of course, before Nixon, you had LBJ who wasn't in the military. But then you have to remember, you had uh, John F. Kennedy. Interesting thing about John, who was in the military. One of the things he said, and I think that really got him in trouble, he said he was going to destroy the CIA. Now remember, this this deal, let's deal with this. I'm, I'm a little bit longer than I want to be on this, but let's deal with this. John F. Kennedy, who came from the who, who was a military person, real fighting person, right? When he becomes president, he says the CIA, get rid of those guys. You come in. He remember he comes from the same class as those CIA, you know, those those OSS, those CIA kind of people. He came from the same class, the same Ivy League schools. So basically, if you want to say this way, he knows that mentality at least. That mentality, that what I call frat boy mentality. They got a toy, they got to play with. The boys in a toy, they got to play with. They they got a situation. They talk about. He said, oh, let's do, let's do this nefarious thing. Let's 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 pull this like we did in this college prank. Let's do that. Those are the kind of mentality that we have. Anyway, when John F. Kennedy said. He was going to destroy the CIA, which just started. Oh, that's when all this started. That's when we had to shout a company because, uh, from my understanding, when I read, I forgot, I read so many books. Somewhere in there, uh, Jimmy Carter, again, was in the military. He wanted to, you know, down to sort of get rid of the CIA too, even though he had a little lot uh, low intensity warfare during his day. But anyway, he wanted to get rid of the CIA too, or at least diminish their, their, their powers. And uh, that's when that whole secret government. You know, came into power. That's when you have. That's when that whole Oliver North. You know, that whole. You know, they're doing what they do. The government does what they do, and it's a secret government under the, under the government. They were run by the. Let's call them the spies, the CIA kind of people. I'm saying CIA, but just the alphabet people. You know, those those NSA, CIA, whatever they call DA. Uh, letters you don't even know. So every time you try to get one of these these folks, right? 
then they got their, their system in place already. So this whole thing about this war and maybe a lot of these people, uh, because they know a lot about government, they're into munitions now. Who's making money during the war? The munitions people. People who make bombs, who make guns, make bullets, you see? So we're in a situation now we, where we have, well, I have to be severe like this, where we have an ignorant populace manipulated by a cooperative media, or, you know, this high praise place of well, readers, but we call it readers here in South Africa, you know, presenters, right? Presenting or stenographers for powers that be who lie because they have an agenda. And the agenda is not in the interest of humanity, whatever have. their agenda is in their own aggrandizement, in their own filling their pockets with their own more millions. So, you know, I'm with, I'm with the ex-president of, uh, of Uruguay, when he says, you know what needs to be taken out of, out of politics? Not money, millionaires, that class of people. I'm saying that class of people, you know, that, 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 that do these, they, that think they, they think they rule because they, they have ruled for so long and we allow them to rule. So there is lots of problems. And this is why the world's in a huge, we're, we're, we're about to do World War III. And I'm, I'm, I'm almost, one of my things about the takeaway about this Trump uh, victory, whatever have I mean, a lot of those folks, they say jobs coming back. A lot of these folks also voted him because they didn't want war. They were against Hillary Clinton, not because he was a female, but because that's one of the, like, maybe the, the third or fourth reason now, but it, it's, a, it's a reason that, that spread across the populace. They don't want another war. But now we got the media cheering bombs and and whoever else cheered about, you know, the presenters have orgasm over like stars burst, you know, bombs bursting in air kind of thing. It's like, and these folks have never been, my point is, these folks have never been in the military. As a person that's been in the military, I'm telling you, in the Air Force, tell, you, there are things you see and you go like, that don't make no sense. Why are they doing that? And we not make any sense. Because, hey, if you want, if you, maybe nobody wants to live. Maybe we want to keep on filling the pockets of the people who, who, who make money off of, off of ignorance and bombs. Maybe that's what it is. I mean, I'm not cooperating with it. What, what about you? Anyway, this is a message from, uh, from me. You know, dispatch. From me, T. From the Patterson, staying in the trenches to bed. Letting you know what I only suspect.